You might not have heard of this great Irish whiskey yet, so it is time we fix that. This week, we're looking at the Drumshambo Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey from the Shed Distillery. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd, and like I said, this week I'm looking at the Drumshambo Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey from the Shed Distillery. So let's get it into the glass, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, first off, what is the Drumshambo Whiskey? Well, it actually comes from the Shed Distillery, which is located in the town of Drumshambo over in the western province of Ireland in Connacht. And it was, I think, the first distillery that opened in Connacht in over a hundred years, so a nice bit of like revitalization of the whiskey business, of the distilling business in that part of the country. But the Shed Distillery, I think, isn't really yet known for their whiskey. I think they're more known for their gins and their vodkas. Their sausage tree vodka does quite well, but I think their most well-known product is the Gunpowder Irish Gin. I'll put a picture of it up there. It's got quite striking packaging and they do kind of different special limited edition releases and I think they're better known for that gin, but this here is a great product that they should be very well known for. For example, they have a version of this whiskey that was finished in a Pinot Noir wine cask, and I tried that and it was very, very tasty. I'm definitely gonna have to try and get myself a bottle of that whiskey before it fully sells out. But right now we're talking about this one right here, their standard edition single pot still whiskey. Now, first off, if you're not familiar with it, single pot still whiskey is the style of whiskey unique to Ireland, and it gives distilleries a bit of freedom to play around with different mash bills because the rules are you have to use at least 30% unmalted barley, at least 30% malted barley, and at most 5% other grains. So distilleries could split the difference and go straight down the middle 50-50, they could go 30-70 or 70-30, or like the Shed Distillery, they could use those 5% other, other grains and add some different grains, and that's what they've done. They've added Barra oats to the kind of mash bill. And when you add oats to a whiskey, it has this kind of creaminess, this kind of density, almost like porridge where you get that heavy kind of weighted, kind of custardy feeling to the whiskey. And when you couple that with a pot still whiskey where you have the unmalted barley giving you this oiliness and that spiciness, it should create a whiskey that's quite dense in flavor even though it is down at 43%. Now, it's not down at 40%, which is always a good sign. I do prefer whiskeys up at maybe 46%, but 43% is still a good sign, and especially for a pot still whiskey. Even though it's on the lower end, sometimes pot still whiskeys can have that extra bit of weight, and that creaminess, and that oiliness that delivers more flavor than you'd expect. It was aged in bourbon casks and Oloroso sherry casks, and they say on their website that it was first fill cask, so it's not casks that have been used two or three or four times that have lost all their flavor. They're first fill casks, so they should give the most amount of flavor to the whiskey. So let's just go straight in for the nose and see how it is. Cheers. Okay, immediately it is like spicy, creamy, sweet. Like there's a lot of um, like toffee notes, like rich kind of caramel, dense, toffee notes coming through, but there's also a nice kind of backbone of like vanilla custard as well behind that. You get that nice bright kind of like melted brown sugar and then beneath that you got that hefty kind of vanilla creamy note coming through. There's also a lot of like um, like fruity notes coming through, like obviously there was that first fill sherry cask, it's going to give you a lot of kind of flavour coming through. And it's kind of like um, figs, dried raisins, that kind of like dried out fruit, there's a there's a bit of citrus peel as well. It reminds me of, I'll put a picture of it up there if you're not familiar with it, there's this thing called like fruit mix, it's this dried out raisins and sultanas and, and dried out citrus peel that people use for like Christmas cakes or those kind of spiced cakes. And it reminds me of that, there's like that really not dried out, not fully dried out like citrus peel, but it's still, it's been kind of half dried out, a little bit sticky, a little bit sweet and it's that kind of orange citrus coming through here. There's also a nice bit of spiciness, like I said, up front you get a lot of that spiciness and it's it's not completely easy to pin down, like it's somewhere between like cinnamon and black pepper. It's like a warming spice, it's not super hot, like as I said 43% it's not going to be like 
burning your nose when you go in for a snip, but yeah, it's definitely warming. It's got that kind of, I'd say more towards cinnamon than black pepper, but there's still that kind of like, I don't want to say sharp, but that like almost bit of, bit of bite of the spice coming through here. So let's just go in for the palate on this whiskey. Cheers. It's creamy, it's oily, it's fruity. There's some like caramel, again with that figs, the raisins, the um, the dried kind of orange citrus on from the nose. That's here into the palate, but it's much more creamy. It's on the nose, I've got a bit of like vanilla custard. Here, less vanilla and more of that dense, custardy, kind of creamy note coming through again. That's probably that oat influence coming through into the whiskey, but it gives you this kind of density. There's still that spiciness, but it's almost like it's been wrapped up in custard, like it's been rounded out. You still get maybe more of a black pepper than a cinnamon on the spice into the palate, but it's definitely like, it's yeah, definitely a bit more, more peppery spice, but rounded out with all that custard, a lot of caramel, almost kind of like, almost like fudgy kind of sweetness, like that kind of like where everything is just rounded and softer and a bit sweeter still. That sherry influence is actually quite strong, it's quite rich and I think it has overpowered like the vanilla, like I was getting vanilla on the nose, wasn't really getting it there on the first sip so I'm gonna go in for a second sip, chew it a little bit, sit with it a little bit and see if I can get more of that kind of vanilla note. Cheers. Yeah the vanilla is there but it's kind of it is overshadowed, I think. Not in a bad way, by that sherry influence. Like the sherry, it's very nice. You get a bit of like toasted oak. You get that dried fruits. I'm also getting a, a little bit of like walnuts, like with the skin on, that kind of like the, the walnuts, that taste. It's like, again, that creamy kind of nutty flavor coming through. The vanilla is there, you just to hunt for it a bit, but I think having that sherry influence be so strong is probably what they were going for because you got all that creaminess coming through from the oats, you probably don't want so much more extra cream from the uh, bourbon, from that vanilla coming through. But as I'm talking now, I am getting a little bit of that vanilla coming back up, probably into the finish. So I'm gonna go in again, final sip, and we'll focus on the finish. Cheers. Okay, yeah, up front, you get that sherry hit, you get that caramel, you get that bit of oak bite coming through, the oak, the toasted oak coming through from the two different barrels it was in. So it, the, the, the finish is kind of like short and medium, like that, that sherry influence, that fruity hit, that's up and then it fades off relatively quickly, like the creaminess, the bit of spiciness, the pepperiness, the little bit of oak lingers on to the finish, letting that kind of vanilla, that kind of baseline vanilla note come up again. But like that is lingering a bit longer, like that pot still note at 43%, like those big fruity notes, those are probably going to fade off faster, but those denser notes, the texture does hang around long enough, giving you this kind of like black pepper or oak kind of feel into the finish. Before I give my final thoughts on this whiskey, if you're new here, scroll down, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I put out whiskey reviews like this every Wednesday and I put out cocktail recipes featuring whiskey every Friday and I will have a cocktail recipe featuring this whiskey this Friday. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed and I will see you then. But overall, I think I like this whiskey. Now, I can see why I think they focus on the gins. Like it does seem to be a very good business line, a good money maker for them, but I wish they maybe made more whiskeys. Like I said, that Pinot Noir finish one was very, very tasty. I can see them maybe being able to experiment with this as a good solid base and going in with different finishes because it's a great little whiskey. Down at 43%, it's not hard to drink. The bit of creaminess coming through from those oats, again, makes it really nice to drink. And it's just a solid, solid little whiskey. If you see it on the shelf, I'd say pick it up if you haven't tried it before because it's a very nice little whiskey, very easy to enjoy. And I know I'm gonna enjoy finishing off this glass. Like I said, hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Sláinte.